space station. All this as NASA scientists keep an eye on an asteroid that's due to make a close call with planet Earth. Right now, I'm joined by Skype by author and former NASA engineer Olympia Lapointe. Welcome back, Olympia. It's so good to see you. Uh, all right, so let's first talk about SpaceX. So far, this mission has been a success. Where are we right now? It's great. Uh, last week, we saw the launch of the Crew Dragon Demo 2 launch with the first humans on the Falcon 9 rockets. And we have great success. The astronauts were able to open their hatch and go into the International Space Station. That is a huge deal. This certification of this launch wanted to verify that this particular launch could indeed match with the space station and that was successful. And not only that, the particular first stage of the Falcon 9 engines aced its launch. It landed in the ocean on a drone ship and it, it was like a science fiction movie. It came down and it was able to successfully land. Now normally this type of vehicle is going to be reused and the rockets specifically are going to be reused. However, because this is a a monumental mission since the United States hasn't gone back to space since 2011. They may use this rocket as memorabilia. How interesting. Yeah, we're, it's now being called the Endeavor, right? In, in honor of, of course, one of the most famous missions in, in uh, NASA's history. Yes. Endeavor was one of the orbiters of the space shuttle program, and that was the program in which I worked on from 1998 to 2007 as a rocket scientist. And in my books, Ma Answers Unleashed and Mathophobia, I talk about Endeavor and I talk about the space shuttle program. And that name in itself resonates with innovation. And so the astronauts decided to name this new launch and this new vehicle Endeavor to honor the space shuttle program and to honor innovation as we see it in 2020. So cool. All right, so let's talk about this asteroid that uh, is fairly large, a little concerned, apparently, uh, you know, obviously not, not worried it's going to hit Earth, but it's just its proximity. NASA is concerned. It's called Asteroid 2002 NN4. Maybe uh, enlighten us a little bit about why this proximity is where it is and why that concerns NASA. NASA is always concerned with what we call potentially hazardous objects. And these are big rocks and, and big objects that fly through the uh, Earth's, well, close to the Earth's neighborhood. So that is defined as anything 4.16 million miles away from Earth. And if it's larger than 150 meters, NASA scientists are always concerned and they're always going to track it to make sure it does not enter Earth's atmosphere. Now, this particular asteroid is large. It is a cross between the New York Empire State Building and a football stadium. So it is large. So you might more than likely be able to see it in the sky tonight. But thankfully, it is far enough from Earth to not make an impact. It is around 3 million miles away. To give you an idea of how far that is, if you could imagine the distance from the Earth to the moon and then multiply that by 13, that's how far away it is. But more than likely, you'll be able to see it and we are gonna stay safe. Oh, good, all right, well, it's a comfortable distance, so that's good. Um, will they be able to see it from the space station and, and you know, bring us some uh, pretty cool photos from there, or is it better to, is it from observatories here on, here on planet Earth? Uh, more than likely both. Missions uh, of the International Space Station are concerned with looking at space phenomenon, and part of that is looking at asteroids, and part of that is looking at space debris. The International Space Station is more concerned about debris that could fly in the Earth's uh, orbit more so than it is for an asteroid. So there's all sorts of observations that is reported and sent back to NASA. So uh, we more than likely will be able to see a lot of information from this particular trip. And you mentioned possibly being able to see it here uh, tonight or where would where would you do that and how could you do that? Uh, actually, if you go to the NASA website. Now, the NASA website has great educational information for everyone, and it is uh, user-friendly. So you don't necessarily have to go to the observatory. You don't necessarily have to go to all these far places because we, we are still in a pandemic. Yeah. But you're actually able to go online and see updates on the NASA website. Olympia, thank you so much. Always great to talk to you. And I'm sure we'll have you back on to talk about the return of the astronauts when they leave the space station and come back, uh, come back here to planet Earth. So thank you so much.
thank you.